Well, hello there, friends. A video you've been asking me for a long time. How to handle, how to take care of your knife and how to handle it correctly. We will do another video on how to sharpen the knife because that's going to take a whole new video. It takes a long time to really do it correctly. But today I'm going to show you how to use it correctly because I've seen so many wrong advice out there. I'm going to give you good advice. All right, friends? First of all, let's talk really quickly about what knife do we need. You know, I see some knife sets out there that have 27 knife, 27 knife. You don't need 27 knife. As far as I'm concerned, you really need about five knives. Let's talk about them really quick. Slicer. It must have a slicer. They're thin uh, all the way through. They're great to slice your turkey, to slice your beef, to slice anything. It's a must have a slicer. So uh, we're going to put them in here. A, some kind of a serrated knife for your bread, for your, if your chef's knife is not up to par, you may need something serrated to do your tomatoes and certain things, but this is really a bread knife. So important to have. A chef's knife, obviously the tool we're going to use the most is your, your chef's knife. They come anywhere from 6 inch to, I think, 14 or 15, way too big, professional chef. At home, 8 it's actually six. A lot of my students at the school love the six inch. The ladies with a small hand love the better six inch. But eight to ten inch, six, okay, why don't we say six to twelve inch to ten inch. Mamma mia, I can't get my size straight today. Uh, six to ten inch is the average size. This is an eight inch. It's very comfortable for me. Some men with a bigger hand, like maybe a ten inch. It's really up to you. All right? Uh, we'll talk about this in a minute also, how to pick a good one. Uh, boning knife. Boning knife is a must, my friend. It's very difficult for you to debone a piece of chicken, debone a leg of lamb, debone anything, getting close to the bone with this guy right there. It's too big, it's too wide, it's too long, it's too difficult to get far away. So a boning knife is a must, must have in your knife collection, friends. And a peri knife. I love this one. It's, it's a serrated peri knife. When I first saw, when it first came out, when Wistoff made this peri knife, I said, that's ridiculous. We don't need teeth in a peri knife. Friends, I have many, many, many knives. I have a beautiful knife collection. I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six peri knife. The one I grabbed the most, the one that I put right here at the end, is my serrated knife. I love it. It's wonderful. So, if you have an opportunity, Get yourself a serrated knife, because why not? It, it's fabulous for fruit and vegetables, okay? Then a steel. We'll talk about the steel in a minute. Two kinds of steel you can really get, the groove steels and the ceramic steel. We'll talk about this later on a little bit, because like I said, this is not a sharpening video. This is mostly how to handle the knife correctly, how to uh, cut, how to use it correctly. And uh, so it's not about sharpening, but I'm still going to tell you a little bit about how to maintain. And you must have this. This is part of your knife collection, friend. Scraper. Don't be scraping with a, with a knife. Every so often I do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. If you're going to do, do it with the back of the knife. Don't do it with a with a, with a sharp head. Unless maybe you're picking up some fresh herbs or something. Otherwise, don't do it. This is great, friends. $10, whatever they cost. Cutting board. You must have a cutting board. If, if, when you buy one, buy as big as you can get, as big as your counter will allow, because it's fun to have. Um, you try to get one with a groove. You see this one right here? And a, and a deep groove. It, it's very important because when you're cutting a roast, when you're cutting a, a chicken, when you're cutting a turkey, all that juice is going to go in there. But that's the only time I need. It's only when I'm going to cut something then it's going to release some juice. That's the only time I need a groove. Otherwise, I have a cutting board that has both sides. You see? Both sides. So one side, no groove, because that's 99% of the time you use, you don't need any juice. So the other side is only, otherwise it's a pain. If you're cutting things and onion and, and, and vegetables and all that, and all of a sudden they go in a crack and it's very difficult to clean. This is only for juices. Okay, you see a lot of people then tell you how do you put it on the counter so it doesn't move? To put a wet paper towel. Big no-no. Don't put a wet paper towel. And so many people out there are telling you to put a wet paper towel. Moisture is not good to leave moisture in your cutting board at all times. This is wood, friends. As much as you need mineral oil to keep up with it, 
We're going to do a video on your on, on, on cutting board because there's so much to do. But don't put it wet there. You know what I do? Look, friends. I put these guys right there. You get this at a, uh, at a um, grocery, not a grocery store, you know, like a Target or a, uh, whatever they call them stores. Um, Walmart, Target, those things have it. This is just people put dishes on there. And this, let me tell you, this is fantastic, friends. You see, look. I tell you what, my cutting board is not going nowhere. It's nice. It's very important. Then your cutting board doesn't slide all over the place. And then you know what I do? I take my scraper and I put it here. So I'm always ready to go. Boom. I also get myself ready. Oh, mama mia. That was noisy. A garbage bowl. So I have it right there. Instead of going to garbage every time, it's much easier to put your garbage bowl. But... Uh, Everybody's worried, wondering, you're not going to use butter today, right? You're going to show people how to use a knife. First of all, this is mental support. Very important. But most of all, you see, that's the first thing I take out in the morning. I come in in my kitchen. I know I'm going to need it. So I don't like it when it's hot. So I take it out of the fridge. I leave it on the counter. And I'll use it. <laughs> Plus me, I use it. All right. So um, I want to make sure I don't forget nothing. I, you, you know what I do, friends, when I do videos like that? I don't want to forget nothing, so I just want to make sure I got it correctly. Okay, let's talk now about uh, handling the knife correctly. The, the knife I'm really going to show you today how to use correctly is you say, your chef's knife. This is the knife you're going to use the most often. When you buy one of those, friends, buy one that you're very comfortable using. M the ultimate knife for me is in the blade is the same weight as the handle. The perfect point balance for me to use is the middle of it. And you notice that belly right here. We're going to, you see that belly right there? We're going to show you how to use the belly correctly. So when you hold the knife, you have a lot of people do that. You have, I remember a lot of my students, they would start like this. And every time I would say, get that finger out of there. So you, <laughs> you don't want to do that. It's not good. First of all, you get really tired of it and it's a terrible way to handle your knife. You want to grab it. Grab the blade, and don't be like squeezing it to death. You want to be very comfortable with it. So just grab it. Be comfortable. Don't let any finger come out. Okay? No, no finger come out. It's got to be like no, 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 none of this going on. Okay? Right there. The, the other finger is hiding right there. And you want to be comfortable. Anyway. You want to be able to go like this. You see, like this. You, you're comfortable. You're like, whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Now, you want to be very comfortable with it, okay, and relax. Because if you're going to cut vegetables for a couple of hours and you're not relaxed, you're tense, it's going to be very difficult, my friends. All right, I want to show you. Now, knife, in, in, if we were to look at it in the microscope, you would see microscopic teeth. More of those teeth you have, smaller they are, and sharper your knife is going to be. Uh, I'll talk about that in the how to sharpen the knife video, but I want to explain you really, really quick. If you were to take, when you sharpen the knife, friends, you take it on a, a sharpening stone, which is like sandpaper, just imagine sandpaper, and you're scraping it on the sandpaper to scrape the metal till it gets to a point. And finer the, the sandpaper is, and finer the edge is going to be, and smaller the, the teeth, microscopic teeth, are going to be. More of those we have, smaller they are, and sharper the knife is going to be. But when we use a knife, I'm going to demonstrate with an onion. Let's do that. First of all, we're going to, you know, I like to use the peri knife to remove the roots. And, uh, and I know I'm going to hear some people say, oh, don't remove the roots, you're going to cry. I don't know where they got that idea from. You're going to cry if you are sensitive to the gas and it's coming out because it's reacting with the water. So what we do, we're going to cut the onion. And, and the reason why I take the onion and I want to demonstrate it to you, you can take the skin, the skin of the onion before, you can take it after, it doesn't matter. I, I like to demonstrate with an onion because everybody uses the onion, right? I want to demonstrate something to you really, really cool. All right, so you'll understand the, the power of using those teeth. Remember now, we have millions of teeth, millions, literally, of teeth that are ready to go through whatever it is you're cutting. I'm going to show you something really interesting. First of all, well, we're, I'm not going to do another onion video re really quick, but I want to, I'm just going to cut really quick 
And then I'll talk a little bit about the clock in a minute also, because there's so many misinformations out there. That, that right there, that um, um, perpendicular, what do you call it, horizontal cut. Psh, don't do any of that. That's ridiculous. Okay? I'm not going to go through the onion again. But you see, the onion is already cut for you, so you don't need to go like this. Whenever you see, when you ever put this, come back over here. You. Whenever you see uh, somebody doing this right there, pff, go on another channel. Okay, That's not good. You don't need to do that, I promise you. See, the onion is already cut for you. In Julienne, all you got to do is cut it this way. I wanted to show you the pow, and when I had my cooking school, I would demonstrate it. All my students, when they would do it, they would go, wow, I got it, because I'm going to show you what it is. Okay, now, you're going to notice when I do, when I move my knife, I kind of give it a motion. Remember now, we have a microscopic teeth. We want to activate those teeth. Think about it when you're using a saw and you're cutting a tree. When you're cutting a tree, you're moving back and forth to do what? To activate the teeth. I, I want you to, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure you guys are going to be able to hear the sound of it because I don't know if my microphone is going to catch it, but I, wanna, I wanted to, to, to demonstrate to you what happens if I don't use my teeth. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to show you the power of using your teeth. Motion, motion, motion. Okay, look, we're going to go straight down. Now, my knife is super sharp. It's probably going to go down pretty easy. But I wanted to show you that, however, no matter how sharp it is, how it resists. Okay, so look, I'm going to go down. You see, you, you can hear. I hope you can hear, right? I hope you can hear. Look. And you see, and I'm pressing. Okay, I'm going through, yeah. Okay, now I want you to see what happens when I use my motion. Okay, look, instead of going straight down, I'm going to use my motion. You see? Look, I don't even feel it going through. I don't even feel it. You see? No. Let's do it again really quick. Okay? So you understand the power of moving forward or backward. It's very important. Look. Look. We're going to go down again. Okay? We go down. Well, fine. You're cut. But now, now listen to this. You don't even feel it. Do this at home, friends. Do this. I'm just going to take this out of the way right now. Because this is not, like I said, this is not today's video. So I'm just going to remove this out of the candy bowl. And the reason why I showed you this, I'll cut this side later. You know, I don't throw nothing away. I use everything. Right? And the reason why I wanted to show you this, friends, it was because it's very important. Whatever you cut, whatever you, you cut, you're going to need to activate the teeth. Now... Another thing that I see a lot of people do is um, uh, uh, claw. Oh, everything. Make a claw. Make a claw. The claw, <laughs> I saw the other day this lady, she says she's cutting a celery. She says, always make a claw. So they go going over there, and the people are so uncomfortable making a claw because they don't really understand what it is. And she's cutting like this, a, a whole thing of celery, roughly cut the thing of celery with a claw. That is so dangerous. You're cutting something rough, you hold the celery at the end, friends. Okay, this is how you cut it at the end. For always give it a motion, though, remember, not, not like this. I mean, you can do this. But look, a little much easier if you go forward or backward, but give it a motion. All right? So you know what? I'm going to need another bowl. All right, let me grab this bowl. And let me take this out of the way, okay? Uh, again... The claw. Let's explain the claw. What's the whole what's the whole deal about making the claw? Very important, but only when you need it. So let me grab a, let me grab a piece of celery right there and let's talk about that claw. Really important to get that close, I promise you. But why is it important? Let's cut this out. Boom. All right. What does a claw do? The claw is only to be used, my friends when you are making small cuts and you want to be very precise of them and you and like you're cutting mushroom you're cutting onion you're cutting celery it doesn't matter what it is you cut when you want them to be small not when you're chopping roughing that's it you don't use the claw you only use the claw when this is the claw okay and the claw is very simple to understand friend it's this knuckle right there is bent okay so what happened is the knife is against the, the knife is against, and if you notice, as long as I go up, you now your professional chef will tell you often they cut themselves here because they're not paying attention, they're talking, and all of a sudden they go a little too high and they cut themselves. But that's 
if the secret is to feel the cold of the knife and going up and down. So your hand, you can do this way or you can do this way. And the, the hand slightly move. And you see the finger, the finger, I'm sorry, the knife is always on the first knuckle. It stays on the first knuckle the whole time. This is how you use the claw. Very simple, you see? So let's do a live one now. <laughs> live one. We're going to go in and we're going to go look. And now you notice my thumb pushes. My thumb pushes. But you notice the whole time, the whole time, my knife is on the knuckle. So unless you are able to do this, friends, unless you are able to, you can do it so many different ways, but the whole idea is to make sure, you know, sometimes I talk and I don't look what I'm doing, and people go, oh my God, you're going to cut yourself. No, as long as I feel the cold on my um, knuckle, I know I cannot hurt myself. That's the only time then claw makes sense to use, friends. So don't go out there and cut everything. I always see somebody cutting a rough onion with a claw on it. You don't need it. Okay. Try to make it simple for you guys. All right. Let me remove more stuff out of the cutting board. Okay. So far you're good, right? So the, the claw, well, let's talk a little bit real quick again about that claw thing. That claw thing. Uh, you see, like right here, this is about as big as I can handle with a claw comfortably. Otherwise, you'll have to just fly. And as a professional chef you'll end up flying, you don't hold it anymore, your, your claw is on top of your food, but you never, never, never let go. So I, I like it better when I can push with the thumb. Um, and you never, 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 never let go out of the contact of the knife, because otherwise you don't know where you are, and that's when you hurt yourself. All right, friends? I think, I hope that I clarify a few things about the claw. And, um, and that's basically it, friends. Um, when you have a tomato, then you have a trouble cutting. Okay, I, one quick little trick. We're gonna go in. Let's put this right here. And if you notice, same deal as before. When you take the tomato, if you're trying to slice it, it doesn't slide too good, just move forward. You see, look, forward, backward, forward, backward, forward, backward. You see, as long as you move it, as long as you give it a motion, you're good to go. It's really not difficult, I promise you. But be disciplined every time you do it, friends. All right, now, one more thing. Very important. One more thing. We're going to show you how to use the steel. Now, what happens is when you are sharpening your knife. Now, remember, sharpening your knife at home with a stone, if your knife is dull, could take you 45 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes. If you're not willing to spend the time to do it, and it's not that easy, I promise you. Uh, when I do my knife, I do them maybe twice a year, three times a year, I sharpen them, otherwise I just use my steel. If you don't want to spend the time doing it, in every city in the world, there is some man out there that is talented enough that can sharpen your knife. Go see a professional. Drop the knife, pick them up the next day, you got beautiful knife. All you need to do at that point is maintain them. You want to sharpen them at home? You get the stone, you want to commit 30 to 45 minutes to do all of your knife, go right ahead and do it. In the meantime, Remember now, we have microscopic teeth. And what happens when we do this to our teeth? They bend, they bend, they bend, they bend. On one way or another. If we do not realign those teeth, if we do not realign them straight, they're going to bend, 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 and they're going to break. And what's going to happen? Now we're going to have a round edge. We're going to have eliminate the point, And now we have a round edge. How do we bring it back? Now, if we have a round edge... You can use this steel all day long. It's not going to do anything. That's why it's most important. Every time you put your knife down 10, 15 times, get your steel and do it gently. So, at home, get comfortable. Okay, this is a ceramic steel. Ceramic, you have to be very gentle with it because it will remove teeth. And not just realign them, it will remove them if you do it too hard. So, my friends, it's very important if you have one of those, if you have a standard one, unless you really, really abuse and use it too hard, this is safer. If you have one of those ceramic ones, be careful, or diamond one, they're very, very sharp, friends, and they, they will remove metal. So, the right way to use is to take the, the knife by the bolster all the way down to the tip, 
Most knife have an average of uh, uh, 15 to 22, 24 percent edge. So, 90 degrees, 45 degrees, 20 degrees, somewhere around 20. You're never going to be quite exact. The right way to do this, friends, is to take the knife to the, uh, at the bolster and go and pull it, but pull the shoulder. See, look, I'm pulling the shoulder. I'm not using this guy right there, this guy, <laughs> that'd be the elbow. I'm moving the shoulder so I'm keeping the angle straight. See, I go like this. Use your shoulder and go all the way down to the end. And then do the same on the other side. See? One, two. One, <laughs> one, one, one. Very simple. You do this a few times, friends. Every time, and I promise you, you feel the knife, the edge come right back. Okay, so very simple, right? Now, when you see some chefs going like this, they're just trying to show off. As long as they do it very gently, they're not showing off. They just do it because they want to do it fast. The secret is to be very, look, I'm barely holding my knife. Barely holding it. See, very, very gently. Nothing wrong with doing it like that. As long as you're gentle. Now, if you, go, you see some guy doing it so hard, they're destroying their knife. Friends, I know there's a lot more to tell you about knife, but I wanted to make it as short as I possibly could. Remember, very important, we use the motion. That's why when you're using the rocking motion, right there, you're using the teeth. You see? You're using the teeth. And this is my favorite type of knife, the uh, European knife, but you can use whatever you want, my friend. This is, I love that. This is a Western uh, uh, um, uh, design, if you will, and I love it. It's very comfortable to use. Just learn to use it this way, and I hope you'll enjoy it. Friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next few days with another fantastic video.